today we will be discussing about the fourth problem of today's weekly contest number of flowers in full bloom so we are given a array flowers each element denotes a start and an end index of the flower of a current flower which can which will be bloomed at t equals to 1 and at t equals to 6 so from t equals to 1 to t equals to 6 this uh, the first flower will be in bloom second similarly from t equals to 3 to t equals to 7 uh, the second flower will be in bloom so what we need to do is we need to answer some queries in each query we will be given a particular position or a specifically a time and we need to answer whether how many flowers are in bloom at that particular time so for example if we have to uh, if we have to answer like let's say uh, what is the answer at 3 it means that at t equals to 3 how many flowers are there which are in bloom so we can see here uh, number of flowers that are in bloom is 2 at t equals to 3 so the answer is 2 so let's just understand this more with an example so let's say uh, this is the time like t equals to 1 t equals to 2 3 4 and so on and uh, this is the flowers so first flower uh, is at bloom from t equals to 1 to t equals to 6 similarly second flower is at bloom from t equals to 3 to t equals to 7 and so on and so forth now let's say you have like uh, you have to answer at t equals to 5 how many flowers are bloom so the answer will be 3 because you can see first second and fourth flower are in bloom at t equals to 5 similarly at t equals to 12 if you have uh, if you have to answer the number of flowers that will be in bloom is 2 like the third and the fourth uh, and at t equals to 15 similarly the answer will be 0 because there is no flower which is at bloom so hope you understand the question now let's try to solve it so basically the solution is very simple uh, if you just try brute force solution so uh, what we have been given is uh, at t equals to 1 uh, sorry the flower 1 will be in bloom at t from t equals to 1 to t equals to 6 so let's just maintain a boolean array and let's just in uh, sorry let's just maintain an integer array uh, where each index denotes how many flowers will be at bloom at that particular time so from t equals to 1 to t equals to 6 first flower will be at bloom so let's just increment uh, everything uh, like this is let's say the first index uh, the third the fourth uh, the fifth seventh ninth 11th 13th okay so let's say so from t equals to 1 to t equals to 6 we have uh, incremented everything by 1 second flower will be at bloom from t equals to 3 to t equals to 7 so that we will increment from t equals to 3 to t equals to 7 uh, everything by 1 so this was already 1 so this will be 2 this will be 2 this will be 2 this will be 2 oh, sorry this will be 1 okay so here uh, the value will be 1 okay now again the third flower will be at from 9 equal to 2 from t equal to 9 to t equals to 12 so from t equals to 9 till t equals to 12 we have incremented everything by 1 okay similarly the for the fourth flower uh, starting from 4 and ending at 13 so starting from 4 is this and ending at 13 is uh, this so we have incremented everything by 1 now once we have this array the queries are simple basically we have if we have to answer what is the number of flowers which are at bloom at t equals to 6 then we can just we can just take this index and return this as an answer so hope you get the uh, solution but what will be the time complexity of this solution let's say uh, the maximum time uh, is t okay and number of flowers is n so for each flower we are iterating over uh, every indices from start to end and in worst case every start to end will will uh, lead us to iterate over all the entire timeline like entire the maximum value of t and we are doing this for every flower so that will be the time complexity of this particular solution t to n so clearly this would not work because in our case uh, uh, the value of t is 10 to the power 9 and n number of flowers is 10 to the power 5 into 10 to the power 4 so now uh, we can just uh, try reducing the time complexity by using prefix sum so you might have already know like this is a very standard technique uh, wherein if you have to find if you have to increment something uh, in a range you use prefix sums so the intuition is let's say uh, you you know that the first flower uh, will be at bloom from this to this 
right from t equals to 1 to t equals to 6 so what you will do you will increment at 1 and decrement at 7 so what what this will uh, what what will happen is when you calculate prefix sum this one will be carried over until this index 6 and once index 7 occurs you are subtracting it so this one effect this once effect will be uh, cancelled out here okay so that's what you are doing on a very high level so hope you get the intuition uh, so what we are doing is we are incrementing the first index and then we are decrementing the last plus one index because incrementing first index will make sure that while calculating prefix sums it will be carried over until the sixth uh, like the last last index uh, so in this case last index which is six and as we are subtracting the same thing at the last plus one index so while calculating prefix sum the effect of addition will be cancelled out here so that's basically the intuition so now uh, we are doing the same thing so we are for the first level the starting index is at one and ending index is at six so basically we just increment at one and decrement at seven notice that the inverse six we are decrementing at seven uh, for the second flower uh, in, uh, start start at 3 and end at 7 so we start at 3 uh, increment at 3 and for ending we decrement the 8th one okay uh, then for the third uh, start at 9 decrement at 12 uh, decrement at 13 so start at 9 uh, we are starting at 9 and decrementing at 13 okay so and the, similarly for the fourth one start at 4 and decrement at 14 so decrement at 14 and start at four okay so hope you get what we are doing now when we calculate the prefix sum of this particular array we will get this so let's just uh, see so one plus zero is one so one one plus zero plus one plus one which is three so here it is three okay so hope like this uh, this is a this is this array will just denote the prefix sum of this particular array now this array will look exactly similar to what we have here. So uh, 1, 2, 1, 2, 2, 1, 1, 2, 3, 3, uh, and so on. So 1, 1, 2, 3, 3, and so on. So basically what we have done is uh, we have calculated the exact same array, but this time we don't need to iterate over every indices of start and end. So previously, if you remember, we are iterating over every indices of start and end and that's where the complexity uh, becomes t into n because for each flower we are in we are iterating over every indices but now we are iterating over only two indices the first one and the last plus one last plus one one so for every flower we are iterating over two indices and then we are calculating prefix sum so calculating prefix sum will just require one pass so the complexity would be n plus t instead of t uh, n into t but even this will not work in this case because uh, t itself is very huge so we need to remove this t altogether from our time complexity now you can see like there's one observation here uh, you can see lot of values in this array uh, is zero okay so basically we know that we can't compute this array directly because computing this array will require this t time okay and we can't have this t time so that's where we can't compute this so whatever we have to do is with this array okay so here we can see the number like there are a lot of things which are zero so let's try to use a sparse array so we you might have learned about sparse arrays and sparse matrices in your uh, college uh, dss lectures so let's try to use something like that so first let's try to answer how many indices are there which will have non-zero values so i will encourage you to pause the video for a minute and try to think about this question so now hope you have thought about this so the number of indices would be 2 into n why this is the worst case and why because for each indexes we are just incrementing or decrementing two values the first and the last plus one okay so this will only change two values to non-zero values okay in worst case uh, similarly this will change two values to non-zero values this will change two values to non-zero values and this will also change two values to non-zero values 
notice that there can be similarities among this like it might happen that this index uh, the two indices that which which this is changing is similar to two indices which this is changing so there can be uh, similarities with that but we are we are worried about the wor worst case so in worst case in total 2 into n numbers of uh, indices will have non zero values so let's calculate this 2 into n indices so for first one uh, one we are we have in, we are incrementing if you remember what, what we are doing we are doing the we are incrementing the first index with plus 1 and then last plus 1 index as minus 1 so that's what we have we have done here we have incremented the first index like we are saying that first index is incremented by plus 1 and seventh index is value is minus 1 now for the second one 7 3 and 7 so we just add 3 uh, 1 to 3 and minus 1 to 8 uh, for 9 and 12 we just add 1 to 9 and subtract minus 1 from 13 uh, for 4 to 13 we add to 4 and remove from 14 so now once we have this array okay this array looks exactly similar to what we have here but this time we just ignore all the zero uh, zeros here so now once we have this let's just try to answer our queries let's say this is the query these are the queries okay so uh, like these are all queries now we have been we have been asked to find how many flowers will be at bloom at t equals to 5 so 5 comes here okay so the value will, value at 5 will be the addition of all this okay so addition of all this is 1 plus 1 plus 1 which is 3 so at t equals to 5 the answer is 3 now let's say we have to ask to find it at t equals to 15 so t equals to 15 will come here sorry t equals to 15 will come here and for t equals to 15 we need to find the prefix sum of all this so 1 plus 1 plus 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 minus 1 minus 1 so the value will be 0 okay so that's how we will answer the queries so what we are doing now is for each query let's say there are two queries so for each query we are iterating in worst case we are iterating over the entire array so number of indices in this array or the size of the array would be 2 into n we have already figured out right right so the complexity will be q into n okay but even this will not work because q itself is very huge so if you see the number of uh, uh, queries is again 10 to the power 4 so this will also not work but we can do something smarter here uh, we notice that uh, we are doing same kind of computations again and again so let's say we have to answer for t equals to 7 so for t equals to 7 we need to compute the value of all this right or so which we have already calculated while calculating t equals to 5 or t equals to 15 so we are recalculating a lot of things so we can save some time here by just sorting the queries so let's say the query was uh, previously the query was not sorted but now let's say the query is sorted now if we have the query sorted and this is the initial array that we have so now let's see how we will answer so for t equals to 2 uh, we will just go on and calculate prefix sums until we hit something which is greater than 2 so we start from here and for 3 we get uh, the value uh, which is greater than 2 so we will stop there and the prefix sum is we can see 1 so the answer for 2 will be 1 now for 5 uh, again uh, you can you will continue from here but where you left and you will go on until you hit something which is greater than 5 so here so the value at 5 will be 3 notice that you are only going in one direction you are not coming back so for t equals to 7 you will again hit uh, something which is less than 7 so again this one only so we will answer t equals to 7 the value is 3 so notice that the value will not be minus uh, value will not be 2 here like we will not include this minus 1 here because for t equals to 7 oh sorry the value will be 2 actually uh, we will include this uh, minus 1 here because at t equals to 7 uh, we have to decrement minus 1 so that's why we will, we will include this uh, minus 1 here now for t equals to 11 we will go on until we hit 11 so 11 is somewhere here so we will go on up till here and just add everything so uh, we have 2 up till here 2 minus 1 1 and 1 plus 1 2 so our answer for 11 will be 2 for 15 we will go on until we hit something which is 
less than 15 so uh, answer will be zero so hope you get what we are doing here so basically that's what our final algorithm is so we compute the sparse array and once we have compute the array we sort the queries and for each then we will compute the prefix sum of the sparse array and answer the queries on the fly okay so we will like you you will you have seen that uh, we are answering queries as and when we are incrementing our indices of the sparse array so let's look at the code quickly so uh, code is simple like we uh, we have just used a map here uh, for calculating the sparse array because uh, we just need to increment this particular position the first position and the last plus one positions will be decremented by one so that's what we are doing now we are sorting the queries so we are like the, I have a structure here that query uh, I will show you the structure so why they, we need to have the indices because while sorting the query the indices will be uh, different like indices will jumbled up so the, we need indices after sorting so that we can arrange rearrange uh, again rearrange the counts as per the given uh, given sequence so if you if I just uh, tell you this so the given sequence was uh, 5 11 15 7 2 but we have answered it in this fashion right so we have to again see that where is 2 2 is here okay so the, the 1 will be at this position similarly where is 11 11 is here so 2 will be at this position so that's what we have to do so that's where we have uh, in like we have also stored indexes while uh, sorting the queries now after sorting queries we will just see the previous positions and prefix sum. So previous position is actually not required. Uh, you can skip this as well. So that's so now current position is x dot first, and we will keep on answering all the queries for which the visit time is less than current position. So visit time is nothing but the value the person will visit. So queries contains two things: the index and the visit time. So we will keep on like for for all of this the answer will be simply prefix sum okay and uh, once we have calculated this we will just uh, increment prefix sums with current value so notice that there is less than here instead of less than equals to so because at current position the value will be plus this so this is similar to what we have answered for seven sorry so this is similar to what we have answered for seven so for seven uh, we have like the, ans the answer was not three; it is two because we have to we have to include this seven here as uh, seventh value as well. So that's where we will answer all the queries which is less than this current position. And for the current position, the answer will come in the next iteration. So hope you got the solution. If there's any doubts in this question, please pin them in the comment below. I will answer them. And you can check out other videos on the channel. Uh, about the different interview experiences in lead code uh, we have all we have solved all the possible follow-ups and if you want me to record any particular videos please suggest them in the suggestions below in the comment below i will do them if you like the content give the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already i will see you next week thank you